process is about thinking and contemplating, reflecting on the oneness and wondrousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your tadhakkur of that is just recalling that. It's already there. It's within you. So sometimes you need to be reminded. And the tadhakkur is not there yet. You're working on it. That's why tadhakkur, both at tadhakkur, it's higher. تفكر طلب وتذكر وجود وبيض التذكر ثلاثة أشياء. so the structure of remembrance three things. الاتفاع بالعظة واستبصار العبرة والظفر بثمر الفكرة. so benefiting from the عظة. and عظة means مو عظة يعني you heard something. Someone reminded you. Wastibsar al ibra. Al ibra is not something that someone said to you, something that happens, something you see. That's why he called it istibsar. Talab al basira. To see something, a lesson. Right? Imma fi ahl al bala. People who are being tried and, and tribulated before you, there is an ibra in it. Fa'atabiru. As we said yesterday, Ya Ulil Absar. But Atibar means that everything happens for a reason. And if it's not happening directly to you, then there's still a lesson in it for you. Right? And that tabir. So that we see that lesson and either we show gratitude, it didn't happen to us, 
right? We're not in that situation, we're not in that difficult situation. Um, to show sabr, if it's a loss for someone else, to um, maybe roll up our sleeves so that we don't go through a similar type of tribulation. So these are the type of heba, <coughs> right? The lessons that you be able to read from other people. Um, and reaping the fruit of the reflection. Right? So with fikr, I came before the fakr, and he's going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but thamr al fikr is the fruits of your thinking, which should lead to action, it should lead to transformation. If it's not leading to that, you didn't realize the thamr, you didn't realize the fruit of your tafakkur, of what you should be thinking about. So, uh, a tafakkur then is to remind yourself, is to recall those three things. Who is the one who is going to benefit from the idha? After three things. بِشِدَّةِ الْإِفْتِقَارِ إِلَيْهَا وَبِالْعَمْيُ عَلْ عَيْبِ الْوَاعِذِ وَبِذِكْرِ الْوَاعِذِ وَالْوَعِيدِ So, شِدَّةِ الْإِفْتِقَارِ إِلَيْهَا إلى إيش؟ إلى إضا So, the intensity of need <coughs> to be reminded by speech, someone telling you that. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put certain ibadat for us to do to remind us, right? The Jum'ah Khutbah is supposed to be Mu'idah. It's supposed to be a reminder, right? To bring people back. Um, the uh, admonition of a uh, dua to Allah is supposed to be a reminder, right? So that they can benefit. So, you're not going to benefit from that except for three things. Shiddat al-iftiqar ilayha. In other words, realizing you need it. Right? And this is lost on many people. They say, yeah, no, I'm good. Right? But even if you heard it before, the idea is to remind you. Right? Remind them. Because it's dhikra, the Right? It's a beneficial to the believers. And one of the adab even of uh, is if you hear something from someone that you already heard that you don't stop them midway and say, Oh, I figured out it's not going to be kiddush, doesn't it? No, you listen to the end. Right? Because maybe you hear it the second time, there'll be a different type of spiritual response to it. Right? Why do we keep, why Quran is the one that you read and it comes back again? You read it and it comes back again. That's why you finish with uh, Surah uh, An-Nas and then you go back to the beginning of Fatha wa Awl al-Baqarah. Why? Because you're not finished. Right? Because every time you go into it, you will find something else. So sometimes you can hear the same thing many times over, but every time you will find something else. Uh, Imam Ahmad Zarruq, he wrote, uh, they say at least, he says about himself, 30 plus commentaries on the same book. I didn't hiccup, you know, I thought this can do. Only three or four or five of them have been published. But everywhere he would go, whether he'd be traveling or he would be uh, resident, he would be writing a commentary. So every time he'd go into it, he'd find something different that he felt he had to write about. So at the club, right, is something that is beneficial. Modern society tries to make you feel like um, it's not. Like it's boring. Oh, that's a repeat of the episode. You don't watch that. It already came on. This idea of repeat. But repetition actually is a key to unlocking things that may have not come the first time, or the second time, or the third time. So from the adab is to allow, to allow the repetition, right? let it penetrate you, let it take hold.
instead of just dismissing it and saying, I heard this before. So Shiddat al-Iftidqat ilayha, realizing you need it to begin with. Well, I'm your aid al-Wa'ad, right? Al-Wa'ad is the one who's preaching to you, is the one who's speaking. Being blind to his or her shortcomings. Why? They said that if you see the shortcomings in Ayyub, <coughs> in, the, in the person who's trying to reach you, you won't listen to them. And the reason for this is um, you think that they're not doing with what they're preaching about. They're not doing with what they say. However, who is the one without you? Who is the one without mistakes? Who is the one without shortcomings? No matter how good you may think they are, they have shortcomings. That's why they said that um, sometimes the khususiyya of the shaykh is hidden in his uh, uh, bashariyya. That the special things about the shaykh are hidden in his, the nature of his humanity, in being human being. You see them, that they sleep and they drink and they eat and they walk and they do everything like everybody else. And we tend to want to think, Right? Quraysh thought that, right? They said, uh, why didn't the book be revealed to an angel? Right? Why didn't it come down to angels? Why to a man? Why a man like us? So sometimes in Bashariya, right, can be a veil. It can hide you from seeing that. It can veil you from seeing that. So don't let your perception of the shortcoming in the teacher, in the da'iyah, uh, to prevent you from even listening, and you may find something beneficial in it. Then the third thing, and we went over this the other day, al-wa'ad, yani the promise of Jannah and Paradise, and al uh, and al and all that mentioned in the Qur'an. Wal-wa'id al al is a threat, possibly, of punishment, of hellfire, of adab, and so forth. So the mawidah or al you're not going to have benefit from it unless you go, you have these three things in place first. You understand that you need it. You don't let the shortcomings of the one telling you to stop you from hearing about it. And also, you benefit, you recall, that the wa'ad and the wa'id are real. And that when you hear them, that they should have some type of response in you. <coughs> so that's in terms of what you hear. In terms of what you see, what you read in creation, also after are not happening except with three things. بِحَيَاتِ الْعَقْلِ وَمَعْرِفَةِ الْأَيَّامِ وَالسَّلَامَ مِنَ الْأَغْرَادِ So, حَيَاتِ الْعَقْلِ The life of the mind. Right? Is that how I translate? Vitality of the mind. And this means that you have a clear head about you. That you're able to make distinctions between things. If you recall from the last chapter, he said part of Nur al-Hikmah, or the light of the mind, was to be able to make a distinction between a ni'mah and fitna. To know the difference between ni'mah and know the difference between fitna. Because they may look the same. They may appear exactly the same. But ni'mah is what leads you to akhirah, if you use it right. And fitna will prevent you from akhirah. Fitna will keep you mired in the dunya. So to be able to tell the difference between the two. Same thing here. To see the ibra, right, in the thing. And sometimes people are blind to the ibra of what's going on because um, their figure, right, their contemplation is mushawash, it's confused. They don't see everything right. They have either kibber, they have arrogance, or they have um, lack of understanding or lack of knowledge even about the basics, so they don't see the lessons in things. That's why I mentioned hayat al you know, the believer should be thinking, right? Should be uh, always looking and considering. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still communicating and speaking with us all the time. But you have to be able to look and to see. Right? Knowing the days. We went over this before. Or Nutsan, or Ziyad al Knowing that days are what you are. That you only have days. And once the days is expired, there's no bringing back the day. You're done with that particular day. There's no i'ala. And then the next day that comes is going to have a whole separate <coughs> set of obligations. The obligations of yesterday cannot be done today. Once they've passed, then they become, what do we call it? Qadha. You're making it up. Right? It's not like you have a new opportunity to do it the next day. The obligations of yesterday is finished. But now, you have to not only try to make that up, but you go into the new day. So knowing that your days, right, are your most important commodity, most important capital thing that you possess. And your days can become full of blessing and barakah if there's ta'mir in waqt. You use your time in the best way. Or, it could be something like uh, uh, Imam Shafi said, he said, Sahib to Sufiya, wa ba'astafat to ila kalimtain, that spent time with the Sufiya, and I only benefit two words, one of them, and what to tasayf. Right? Time is like a sword. Imma an taqtabi ahoy taq. Either you cut with it, or it cuts you. Right? Because it's that thing, which keep, it keeps moving, you can't stop it. You don't have a remote control and hit pause, and time stops. It's not possible. So, every second, every moment, it's like a running clock. And every second, every moment, you get closer to dying, to your death. Because you begin to die as soon as you're born. That's just the way we are. And so, it's minus one each time, each minute, each day that goes by. So, Ayla is not going to work for people. Istibsal is not going to work for people. If they think they're going to live forever, if they think there's always time, right? There should be a sense of urgency to your life, right? Things are urgent. If I can do it today, then I should not delay until tomorrow. What's salama min al right? And to be free from, here he says, designs, which good translation, I think, at this particular point. In other words, aghraat dunyawiyya. Right? Have a particular kind of false hopes and dreams and aspirations that relate particularly to the dunya. Because if you have those, then you're kind of on your track already. You're not willing to listen. You're not looking for anything. And mashgul la yushra, right? So if you're already busy with your dunya, it doesn't matter who says what to you. It doesn't matter what type of musiba or calamity. You don't have ibra and you don't have uh, because you have abroad. So to be free from having particular designs about how your dunya should be. Then the last section here, So as for reaping the flu fruit of reflection, it is realized with three things. The al-amal, the amal fil Quran, wa so the first one, this is Amal, limitation of hope. Uh, doesn't mean hope here, that's not a good translation in this regard. This is Amal means the idea of wishful thinking that you always have more time to go. That's how they refer to it. This is Amal. So, in other words, not dreaming that I'll actually make it past tonight. So having a sense of urgency that uh, whatever it is that you need to do, do it as soon as you can. <coughs> With the Amr from Qur'an, contemplation in the Qur'an, right? The Qur'an is there not to be parked on yourself or to be written on the lawn or only to listen to the Qur'an in Mujawad when you feel like it, but you put the Amr, the Dabur, the Ayat, the Ma'ani, the Nawahi, the Qisas, for the Ibar, for the Awamir, right? All those things that should be ta'amun, thinking about it. The Qur'an is of the nature that uh, the ayah can bring you to different places at different times, depending upon your istadat. 
depending upon where you're at as a person. So you may read it one time, you get something out of it, you read it another time, something completely different. Uh, and that's only going to happen if you spend time with it. Then he mentions things that should be avoided or that we should have less of. So, Qillat, al khunta wa tamani wa ta'alluq, shaba wa manan. These are all things related to shahawat. So, khunta or khunta means the type of company that you keep. Right? And he said, all of these things should be ala qadr al according to your necessity. So wasting time with people who waste their time, right, or spending time with people who waste their time is a waste of your time, right? So if all of you waste their time and you're hanging out with them, then with the Lura, you're also wasting your time as well. <coughs> and that's the least of it, right? The, the worst is you're doing more than wasting your time. You could be also doing irtikab, ma'asi, muhabramat, and so forth. So um, to have to keep it, try to keep it to a minimum, and only that amount which will be of some benefit to you. Remember, this is a bidayat, right? There's going to be other types of people where they should be with people more, not because they're going to benefit from the people, but the pe people benefit from them. Because if you think about Rasulullah what benefit did he have, he himself, from being with people? But the idea was the people benefit from him. So you see early on in his Nubuwa, or even after Nubuwa, كان يتحنث ويختلي في غار حراء الليالي ذات العدد, right, as the hadith says. He would spend many days and nights in Hira, sometimes up to a whole month. He doesn't see anybody else. ولا مخلوق. And this is before the Nubuwa. After the Nubuwa, then we see this is happening less and less and less. So the Prophet said also there was a type of tarakki. There was a type of oh he himself, yeah, he's elevated according to those spiritual laqams. So at the end, he was spending very little time by himself. And most of his hours were spent with people, either people uh, on the outside, sahaba, or his family, or so forth. People come to speak to him, to ask him. But yet, he was in a higher place than he was when he started. Um, but in the beginning of one's path, then one should avoid the type of uh, lots of time wasting that you find with people who are not very cognizant about their time. What tamanni, right? Tamanni here, similar to Qusar al Amal and the one before sort of having these false hopes and dreams, don't have that, but rather fulfill the commands that Allah SWT asks you to fulfill, and avoid that which He asks you to avoid. What ta'alluq? Right? Ta'alluq with what? Anything besides Allah SWT. Being sort of um, driven and finding disappointment and hope in things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, if you continue to do that you won't have much benefit to your fikrah so the idea behind the fikrah is to have only ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the shama wa manam satiation in other words eating till you're full and sleeping too much those two are kind of related the more you eat the more you sleep and Said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, كَانَ إِذَا تَغَدَّى لَمْ يَتَعَشَّى وَإِذَا تَعَشَّى لَمْ يَتَغَدَّى صلى الله عليه وسلم. You either have غَدَى or عَشَى, not both. Right, you didn't have like buffet and three meals and that. And هَذَا بِالْإِخْتِيَارِ He chose to, to do that, to live that way. And he said, نَحْنُ قَوْلُ لَا نَقُلْ حَتَّى نَجُوَى وَلَا نَقُلْ حَتَّى نَشْبَى We don't eat till we're hungry. And when we eat, we don't eat till we're full. If people follow that one rule, half or more, I would say, of all these amrad, sukkah, and cholesterol, and banana, all these things would, would be eliminated if people just follow that one principle. And also it has effects on your spirit, on your spirituality. When you 
satiate yourself too much, when you sleep too much, it causes a laziness not only of the body but of the soul. That's why they said, you know, all these things, they would say, for example, uh, a sarik or a sair, they don't sleep until halas, oh, yeah, mish'ed, ma'adun. As soon as they put their head down on the pillow, they're asleep. So if we look to the uh, sheet under the back row, some points. Number six, learn to listen to admonishment of Ida, regardless of the state of the admonisher, by listening for Allah. <coughs> In other words, it's really Allah speaking to you, not the person in between. So kind of ignore their mistakes, their shortcomings. If he says something, she says something that's clearly not of knowledge, it's their we ignore that, we're not talking about that. But we're talking, if it's right, but somehow you feel the person is not right, then at least listen to you know, what they have to say, rather than thinking about are they right, is their state right, that type of thing. Arrive at a clearer remembrance by removing objection to Allah's decree. This also is a veil, hijab, it's a block. Too many objections. Why me? And all those things, it's show, it's effort. It's, um, it takes a lot of time and energy out of you when you're busy objecting to things. So remove the objections and then the things will be much clearer. Your tadakku will be yeah, easier. When you have all these things in a way, objections, you're too busy, right, thinking about that. Commit to reading the Quran every day in whatever amount you can maintain. You need to have uh, a daily width of Quran in any amount. The idea is not if you can't do that, but whatever you can do, one page, half a page, five minutes while you're waiting for the metro or the bus, Five minutes, you get stuck, uh, you have a mushaf next to you, and let's if the mushaf. Right? Whatever time that you have, then you just uh, try to spend it at least a few minutes every day. If you do that consistently, right, then you'll find your life is changing. And the idea is to do it and intend to have this consistency for life. If you want to take on shame in the wafi, Right. I have to do all the fun. After you're consistent with that, then think about in nawafid. How do we approach in nawafid? By trying to whatever we do, we maintain it for life. So that means, yeah, you should do that for life. Then intend it for life, even though you may not be able to do it all the time. But have the intention. So do the amount that you're capable of doing. Say, I If it goes more than this, good. Take your time. You know, you're not in a rush. So it's kind of developing you over time. You want to fast particular days out of the week, then intend it for life. You want that at the end of then start one day a month if you can't do three. Right? And any day in the month. To be consistent with that, do it for six months. Do it for a year. Then you can go to two days or three days a month. Maybe Mondays then. Maybe you want to do Mondays and Thursdays. But uh, it's much, much better to do it consistently than to do much and then leave it. Right? His ibadah was consistent. So consistency is the key. The you know the, the drops of, of water on the rock, if you keep it up, will penetrate eventually. It's the same spot. You look I mean. Right? Even though it could be more, it could be more water. But it's not 
It's not consistent. So the idea is consistency. So I'll move on to the next chapter. باب الاعتصام قال الله عز وجل واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا وقال عز وجل قائل واعتصموا بالله هو مولاكم So he's going to talk here about two types of اعتصام as reflected in the verses الاعتصام بحبل الله شيء والاعتصام بالله شيء آخر so we have at the psalm, seeking shelter, he says here, I would say, being steadfast with the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So he's going to differentiate between the two. So he says, at the psalm, bihabdillahi, ho muhafadatu ala ta'atihi, muratiban li amrihi, wal at the psalm, bihabdillahi, ho taraki al kulli mawhun, wa tahalusu al kulli taradud. So the اعتصام بحبل الله المحافظة على طاعته It's adhering to his obedience right? مراقبا لأمره and being vigilant at the same time of his command So it's more about the outward pious acts outward devotion والاعتصام بالله هو الترقي على كل ما هو وَالتَّخَلُّصْ مِنْ كُلِّ تَرَدُّدٍ So, اعتصام means rising above, being elevated above all of your delusions. كُلِّ مَغْمُونَ What does that mean? It means that all of your delusions about Allah, about the nature of reality, about yourself, that usually get in the way of people, you rise above it. Right, you put it to the side. And you just seek out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal atisal also wa taqallus min kulli taraddud. And to remove all of our hesitations from reaching that steadfastness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal atisal wa ala thalathi darajat. So three levels. Atisal wa ala بالخبر واستسلاما وإذعانا بتصديق الوعد والوعيد وبتعظيم الأمر والنهي وتأسيس المعاملة على اليقين والإنصاف والاعتصام بحبل الله So اعتصام العامة doesn't mean common people really it means عامة السالكين the people who are seeking So بالخبر Right, khabar here means sorry, the Quran or Sunnah. Yani, tasdeek al khabar. If it came from the Quran or came from the Sunnah of the Prophet, we go, we have to believe in it. Wa istislam al ilahal. Right, and also to, to submit to it and to acquiesce. Bi tasdeek al wa'ad wa wa'id, which we went over before. Believing in the promise and the warning of the ayah, wa ta'zim al amri wa dahi. Right, and having this ta'zim of the command of Allah subhanahu wa taala and His prohibition, and we said ta'zim hadi min al amal al qalbiya is something of the heart. They said that if you are waiting to know why, you have to do it a particular way. Then you're not really having ta'zim al amr wa nahi, you're having ta'zim al ilm bil amr wa nahi. Right? So if you say, al fikr, mawdala mish dakhil demani. Doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm not sure. Right? This is not ta'zim bil amr wa nahi. This is ta'zim with your understanding of it. So I'm only going to do it. If I understand it. If I don't understand it, you're not walk off. I'm not sure, I'm not that type of thing. Um, then that's not really 
ta'zim, right? You're not really making ta'zim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're still putting all of the stake in yourself. Rather than putting it in the idea, even if I don't understand it very well, then at least I understand it's true. So, hintat ta'zim is very, very important. What that sees in mu'amala ala al-yaqeen, what we saw, right? And to make that cease to establish, right, your mu'amala with Allah and with people, with Allah ala al-yaqeen, right? Everything I do, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I should have certainty as I'm doing it. Women in Saf Ma'anas. So people in Saf means that I have Itiham in Nafs wa Talab Iltimas in Aza Lil Akhari. I'm hard on myself and I'm easy and I look for excuses for other people. Usually we do the opposite. Right? I'm very easy on myself, what they call Ishfaq al Nafs. Not a single excuse. For everybody else. They're wrong. I'm right. Rather, it should be the opposite. Right? Wawla atisam bihabdillah. That's it. Atisam bihabdillah. Wa atisam al khasa. Right? The elect among the people. Bil il khita. Wawa sawl al irada qabdan. So in khita. Right, and he describes what it means. It's like cutting off. What are you cutting off? Solid irada qaddan. Who's irada? Whose will yours? Some of them said to be the true sadiq or Sufi, it's to want not to want. To want not to want. So as long as you have wants, right? Yani, fi irada amam al usad ila rabbina then you still have يعني, شائبة, you still have a little bit of uh, nafsiyah, of me, of I. So as long as that's there, then you're not going to be at the sum and khasa. Because you have to lose the I, you have to lose the ego. So to want only what Allah wants for you. To want only what Allah wants for you. لو حاجة دي فيها خير يبقى صباح سلطانة بيسهل لي. بس. But if you feel still, even if you think that thought, I still want the thing that I want, you Rather than you are putting tawakkul, tafweed, right, with Islam, Allah, you're not having any of that. The great Mushtaq Ahmed al Muhammad. One time he came across this man who was on his way to Hajj. And he's a man who made Hajj before, maybe a few times already. So as he came across him, he asked him, yeah, he said, I'm going to Hajj in Mecca. So he said, what if I told you that uh, there's a way for you to not have to go to Hajj again and you'll have much, much more reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than going to Hajj. Would you be interested in doing it? And he asked, well, what would that be? He said, well, fi aytam here, that need some help, or fi almara here, or fi, you know, madrasa, or masjid, mahtagid, maybe, or shalakish. So he counted a few things. And then he asked the man, uh, how do you feel? Are you interested in doing these things or you still want to go to Hajj? He said, I kind of still want to go to Hajj, even though he said those things to me. Right? Which means that even if you're gonna you're gonna determine the thing that's gonna please Allah, well Amamak, yeah, I mean uh uh is telling you that these things are more beneficial. Because the general principle is that which brings more benefit to more people is better than that which only benefits yourself. So if I already done Hajj al-Farida, right, the people that are alone and they meet, and then I can help them, then that would have the own. Right? It's not saying that don't go to Hajj, it's wrong, but if we're saying what takes precedence, this takes precedence. So that means, right, even if it's something that seems like an act of worship, 
but you still feel, I'd rather do this one than that one, then you should even have seen it. There's a little bit of ego still, because you're the one who's kind of determining what should please Allah and, and what's more pleasing or less pleasing. That's why Nur uh, al-Hikmah, Hayatul Aq, those two things that you mentioned, means you're able to discern you know, that which is important. You're able to prioritize. One of the signs I said, if someone's not able to prioritize, if you have more himma than nawafi, then the fara'ah. Ta'ala had salat al-duhr, safarat al-duhr, no, but I don't think I'm, you know, I, binat al-madrasa li flusi, yeah. Okay, Umar al-Khattab, Imam Malik records it in the Dawla, in the first chapter, he tells his uh, his Umar, yani his provincial governors, that in the Hamad Amra Angi, he was Salah. The most important thing for me is the prayer. He's talking about people who are governing places. He said the most important thing, and he said why? Because from al salah fa innahu li ghayriha adya. Because whoever is remiss, is negligent for salah, that's a sign. Anything else is going to be more remiss and negligent. Right? Not that Madame Bisalli Basib Yufsid will be the Muslim. No, it doesn't mean that. It means it's a sign, it's a delil that if he's not doing that, if he's not taking that as important, in other words, oh basira. He doesn't have the hikmah to understand how to prioritize things. So if he doesn't want to prioritize the salaf hayatu how is he going to do everything else? How is he going to prioritize the needs of the people? Huh? How is he going to build roads and build hospitals and all the things that you know he would need to do as a leader if he can't even get from Shaykh for Salat from How's that going to happen? So he's taking it from, from that perspective. So if you have more himma for things that are less important than over things that are more important, you have a big problem. Right? In Basira. Because you don't see. And that means you've You've convinced your ego has convinced you that this thing, where it seems like a really good thing, and you you really want to do it, but if you don't have as much himma, you're like you're not so enthusiastic about doing the thing that's more important, right? Then your mizan is off, right? Your your compass, bosla, it's not functioning properly. So you put your, the things in the proper place. So every time, you know, your waqt has an obligation. So you see. What is the obligation of my particular time uh, right now? Like I told the people in the Bay, I made this joke. If someone could, uh, anyone who knows how to program apps in iOS and Android and Haggadi? Uh -huh. Yeah, good morning. <clears throat> if we can make an app, right, that it like can read you. Like read your day, like it Google's your name, Doctor Hagamut, Doctor there, and then every time a new obligation comes about in your day or in your week in your life, it would give you like a shot or an alarm, right? Up, oh, you know, red, uh, you know, signal, no obligation. So tomorrow, Salat al Fajr is not obligation yet. Nobody, nobody's obligated to do it yet because it hasn't happened yet. But Salat Awal then in fact. Then all the Muslims they would have, you know, inshallah that comes up, now you have to pray. Right? Um, if you uh, uh, you move to a new house or a new apartment, then you'll have some of the sharat, oh, you have new neighbors, Lazim Ba'ahum and uh Yani uh Hassan is still a bin of the bin uh gear on it all that. If you um, you know, I think the joke, if you get married, you have like all of these go off all at once. <laughs> a million of them, right? So uh, every single thing that comes up in your life, there's going to be these obligations. And so every time something comes in your life, you think, okay, 
I came into contact with somebody. Hatta when you go in the car, you get out on the street with Tirka bin Mahwa. If you get a bump, it's going to come up. Obligation. Right? For example, a small thing, no harm or harm. You don't want anyone to harm. You don't want anyone to harm. You don't want anyone to harm. Right? Things like that. Those things, it's actually true. Ashan entered, you know, to bring even a little bit of other, a little bit of discomfort to anybody. Now the aslan yani muhalif, right? There's no, there's no uh, justification for it. So that's a minimum obligation. Minimum obligation, yani the minimum right of khalif, Ali, you don't harm them. The minimum, and the shi. Tama fi hukuk atar kila kamal. You don't harm them, maybe you bring benefit to them. Right? And in Muslimin, actually, they have the biggest obligation with Quran Not only are we not supposed to harm, not only are we supposed to bring benefit, we have to have the Adam in the middle. Right? We have something special. So, our obligation is we have to show them and tell them. Right? Their, their salvation and the Jat Min al right? We have, Allah gave us the responsibility to try to help them with that. So if we're not even doing the first one, how are we going to get to, how can you be harming someone and expect them to listen to your da'wah? How could that work? Because da'wah means you invite. Can you imagine you invite someone to your house by then? What would that be? Be at the atab? Did you ever kill him? That's what we. That's our dawah today. The dawah of Muslims. That's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're the shalut. Right? So dawah, you know, bil mawida til hasana, idru ila sabi rabbika, bil mawida til hasana. يعني كلمة طيبة. معاملة طيبة right but to you know to harm them while you're doing it أي دعوة who's going to listen to that who's going to accept that invitation so someone uh, and we just talked about وإسبال الخلق على الخلق بسطا ما هو لك what we just said right إسبال right إسبال means like just let it flow. Let it cover them. Al-Khuluq. <coughs> Good character. Al Khalq. Bastan. Just give. Right? And the key, actually, the first key is so that you don't harm other people, is you have to tolerate them harming you. Ahtimal al Right? No matter al you better have to have good mozi. With the rule. Right? Now, Shah Tahtam in Nas, then there's no way in the Mishatul Dil Haga Alihum yet. No way. So, the first step then is to build within yourself Shay Ismu Ahtimal al Adam. To absorb, right? Absorb them. Tahtawihum. Tahfuanhum. And the Prophet said about him, he 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 said about that type of thing. So, uh, that's not going to happen unless you have forward nafs, forward khuluq, تحتمل الأذى من الناس. لو واحد بديق خلقه على أي حاجة خلاص. You're never going to be able to to be in that kind of first things first. You know, to absorb this thing. How do you absorb that? تحول العلاقة أو المعاملة من معاملة الخلق إلى معاملة الخالق. Stop dealing with people. Instead, deal with Allah. Some of them said for 30 years, <clears throat> um, I'm speaking to people 
and they think I'm speaking to them, but I'm not really speaking to them, I'm speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're speaking to me, and they think they're speaking to me, but I'm actually listening to Allah. In Mu'amlabat, Ma'a, or Bina subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not with Amr wa Zayd wa Fulan. It's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only way, I believe, that you can be able to tell us in Mawa, Ahtimal al See them as, you know, tatarahum alayhim. Right? They don't know. They're making a mistake. Uh, you go to the bank and uh, the customer service, the mu'amla is in Arab. Yeah, it's not about you really. Maybe they had a bad day. So, to you, this actually is an opportunity, right? Because it could have been somebody else with Danny Mukni, or Dani, or Amalia at Tsar. But you have the opportunity here, you have the chance, it came to you. It's like Allah SWT is saying, to absorb him, be patient with him. Right? Understand. Be, as they say, empathetic. Then he felt being empathy with sympathy. Right? Sympathy means Allah for the Fulan Miskim al Ben. Right? And you feel you feel sorry for them. I'm an empathy into his hobby history. Yeah, I need to talk nothing from a can with this stuff. So it's not just feeling sorry, you feel who they are. With the aqua. Well, and it's harder to do. But if you can put yourself in an empathetic position, then why would you become angry at them? Why would you react to them? Right? Because it's, it's like reacting to yourself. Because you're already there. You put yourself there with them. It's extremely easy. No? It's a bit draining to be empathetic. Oh, yeah. No, it's not easy. Well, it's not talking about it. There's nothing easy here. That's, uh, you know, أول طريق المجاهدة. It's going to take effort, a struggle, no question about it. Right? Uh, in, in, من لم يستطع الصبر فعليه بالتصبب من لم يستطع الحلم فعليه بالتحلم like لو الصبر is not something حاجة يعني يعني uh, يعني مألوفة وصديقة عندك حاجة كده بالطبيعي then you struggle with it same thing with الحلم وعلى فكرة الحاجة دي أرزاق some people naturally إنسان حليم صابر وشكور and some people that لازم هو بقى يعني فعلا يشتغل يجاهد نفسه بس ده مقبول وده مقبول just like in the hadith about اللي بيقرا القرآن يعني من يقرا القرآن وهو ماهر فيه فله أجر ومن يقرا القرآن وهو يتتعتع فله أجران نفس الشيء اللي بيقرا القرآن والعملية سهلة بالنسبة له وبيجود ما شاء الله جود له أجر اللي بيقرا القرآن بس بيتعصلب ومش عارف و العملية صعبة والشاقة بالنسبة له له أجران. فالأجر على قدر النصب يعني. <تصفيق> so uh, نعم تأسيس المعاملة على اليقين والإنصاف يعني بين الناس وهو الاعتصام الحمد لله. لم يموت دعوته بالإرادة قبضا وإسبال الخلق على الخلق بسطا. ورفض العلاقة عزما على ايه ما كل ما سوى الله سبحانه وتعالى so to reject any type of علاقة يعني any type of thing that will uh, affect your hopes and aspirations so put it all with Allah سبحانه وتعالى and part of that is not to have expectations from people. Because when you have expectations from people, this is type of alaq. So when you stop having expectations, right, then that means if they don't meet your expectations you never had, then why would you be upset or unhappy? Also, you didn't have expectations. Get you to walk back khalis. Especially with people close to us who do have expectations. 
هل نتوقع حاجة يعني معينة من زوجتي أو الزوج أو الابن أو الأب أو الزميل في الشغل أو الأخ أو الصاحب كده ماشي؟ We do have expectations. But the idea then is to um, not let them not meeting your expectation for them to for you to see them less in your eyes. In other words, everybody makes mistakes. And if you think you're gonna find someone who makes no mistakes, then you ask them for the impossible. Ibn Ajiba he said that uh, the person who wants to find everything that they want in the wife or the husband or the friend is very, is very, very ignorant. Why? Well, because you can't find everything you want in yourself. How are you going to find in other people? So the idea then is to kind of have this general idea that people make mistakes and people can slip and, and, and so forth. But we don't do that anymore. That's it. Let's say he had a bad day. Let's say, you know, he came out, he misspoke, he made a mistake. Yeah, we have to be able to kind of نقيل عثرات الناس right just مشيها how many times and times we make mistake came with that we didn't mean it right came out wrong said wrong that type of thing so لعندو uh, حكمة has wisdom they understand the nature of people and people make mistakes Right? And this is the Masuk with Urwat al Wuthqa as is mentioned in the Ayah al Qurani. The elect, amongst the elect, Al Ittisal. So the one before it, Ittita. The one after it, Ittisal, and their opposites. So the one before it is a type of restraint, removing. Ala'at, connections, things that will keep you, what we will call taqliya, <coughs> right? To khalli nafsa min kulli ma siwa Allah. Take out everything that is not connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma al-ittisal, that now that you're mujarrad and you're fa'il, you're ready for shuhud. Well, that's what he says, over shuhud al-haq, tafridan, to witness singularly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything. Yeah, you don't see anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بعد الاستغذاء له تعظيما والاشتغال به قربا وهو الاعتصام بالله. After what? استغذاء يعني التواضع. Right? To lower yourself تعظيما. And that's how it works. كل ما تواضعت كل ما عظمت. Every time you were humble, then you have greater تعظيم of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أما أنت تعمل نفسك قريب مع الله تحط نفسك على نفس المستوى that's not تعظيم. So you have to see that the gap is immeasurable. And you do that by أنت تنزل. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where he is. But you have to see that. والاشتغال به قربا. Right? To be busy with none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a way towards him. هذا يسمى الاعتصام بالله. So اعتصام بحبل الله as I mentioned at the beginning is different, right? It's more about istislam, idhaal, you know, submission, acquiescing, تمشي على قاعة العلم. أما الاعتصام بالله now it's about witnessing, right? It's about an internal state, seeing only Allah subhanahu wa taala in everything, and not seeing the intermediaries and wasaid. Right, the people who mean be happy with Allah subhanahu wa taala. Nothing is going to happen. You didn't want to happen, right? No one is going to enter your life. Allah didn't want to enter your life. 
النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he said this to Ibn Abbas وهو عنده عشر سنين right he said يا غلام إني أعلمك كلمات I'm going to teach you some words أحفظ الله يحفظك إلى آخر الحديث and then he said وإن اجتمعت الناس على أن يفعوك بشيء لم يفعوك بشيء إلا بشيء قال كتب الله لك وإن أرادوا أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك بشيء إلا ما بشيء إلا ما كتب كتب الله عليك That's exactly what he's talking about. So nothing is going to happen to you unless Allah exactly wanted to happen to you in that way. Right? So shuhud and tafridan is to see him as the author of everything that's going on. So if we move to the uh, sheet with some minor points, we'll have to solve them. Remove your hesitations by accepting Allah's wisdom in His plan for you. Allah is not out to get you, He's not out to punish you in this life. If you're a believer and you accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the things that happen to your life are can be had. There's signs for you, right? And it's for you to ultimately come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remain steadfast in the role of Allah by resolving to fulfill all his commands and avoiding all his prohibitions, as we said. And then remain steadfast to Allah by showing mercy to his creation and seeing him as master and author of all, as we mentioned in the last point. So chapter 8, Al-Firaq, Allah Azza wa Jal, so flight or running away. Usually when you talk about al-firar, al-firar min fleeing from something, usually in the language. Right? So the Quran farrat min qaswar. But here, firru in Allah. So what are people supposed to run away from? Kulli ma siwa Allah is with Run away from everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why there's no mid. He doesn't mention from what, because it means from everything. So he says in Firar, هَوَ الْحَرَبُ مِمَّا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِلَى مَا لَمْ يَزِلْ So to run away from that which has never been, to what has never ceased to be. That so what is مِمَّا لَمْ يَكُنْ Right? If you compare it, so everything that has a bidaya has a everything that can have bidaya necessarily has nihay. So because we had a beginning, necessarily we have to have an end. And everything that is beginningless will also be endless. That's what it means by Malam Yazid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and will always be and will always will never cease to be. So that's the only true thing. Whereas everything else, us, we had the beginning, so let's say we have to have an end. So stop being busy with the temporary things and be busy with the permanent thing. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa'al thalathi darajat Firal al من الجهل إلى العلم عقدا وساعيا ومن الكسل إلى التشمير عذرا وعزما ومن الضيق إلى الساعة ثقة ورجاء So فرار of the عمر or عمة السالكين from ignorance to knowledge عقدا وساعيا عقدا يعني من حيث العقيدة you have to know what you need to know and what's true وساعيا من حيث الفقه you have to practice the ibadat أو الحاجة وَمِنَ الْكَسَنِ إِلَى التَّشْمِيرِ Right, from laziness to diligence, he says here, or to, or to uh, with caution and determination. Yeah, and it gets serious. وَمِنَ الْدِيقِ إِلَى السَّاعَةِ ثِقَةً وَرَجَاءً And from tightness to sa'a, expansiveness. Right, because Tightness comes from our delusions. 
الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء والله يعيدكم مغفرة منه ورحمة والله هو الفضل العظيم right الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر he promises you ديق right he promises you poverty and then based upon this promise يأمركم بالفحشاء then he commands you to فحشاء why because he says والله أنت الرزق بتاع ده قوي بتاعه وهتعيش من غير ما تجيب منين؟ فا يعني عملية مباحة بالنسبة لك يعني. أنت في ضيق، أنت في ضرورة. ويأمركم بالفحشاء، they go together. So a promise promise of narrowness of poverty will lead to فحشاء. Right? Going outside of bounds. So that's ضيق. Right? And خزائن رحمة ربك يعني لا حد لها. There's no there's no uh, limit on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promising the opposite. Maghfirata minhu wa rahma. Wal maghfira la mahdudiya. Wal rahma la mahdudiya. There's no limit to Allah's maghfira. There's not like only X number of people He can forgive or X number of people He can have mercy upon. It's as much as He chooses to. So shaitan eyes yidayyik aliyya. أما الله سبحانه وتعالى راح يفسح لنا وفران الخاصة of the elect من الخبر إلى الشهود ومن الرسوم إلى الأصول ومن الحظوظ إلى التجريد من الخبر إلى الشهود يعني الخبر يعني نص الآية أو الحديث we solve it in khabar. Right? We believe in it, we follow it. Even though we don't understand it. But we don't stop there. Right? We don't stop at the literal part. There's a part beyond that. It's more a shuhud. This is the khasa, which is the amma. This is the khasa. Then they can have a witnessing of the meaning and the secrets behind the taklif. Right? The taklif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a hikam. There's nothing in there that's niqam. Which niqam is sharia. Habudin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Hanafi is samha. Right? Kula hikam. All of it is wisdom, all of it is is tayyibat. Haram ayat al khabat wa hibblat al tayyibat. That means everything that is halal is tayyib. And everything that is tayyib is halal. And everything that is khabith is haram. So sharia al muhammadiyya. It's all hikam, utiba. There's no niqam. There's nothing in there as a punishment for us. Unlike some nations before us. Right? By their zulm, right? Their oppression of others. We made haram for them. Tayyibatin. Wahidat lahum. Tayyibatin aslan kanat halal. Walakin bisabab dhulmihim. Wa yani shiddatan alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haramha alim. We don't have that. In fact the sharia of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam was to come and lift all of these muharramat. Ala bani Israel. But they rejected him. And then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam the, the one that has no niqam whatsoever. There's nothing arbitrary. There's nothing meant as a punishment. There's nothing that doesn't make sense. The only thing is, you may not understand it. I may not understand it. We may not get to an understanding of it. But that doesn't mean that it's not niqam. So, in the khabar, the shuhud, right? Khabar, yani, in the sabbat al-khabar. And the shuhud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yurini. بعض هذه الحكم. He shows me, right? ومن الرسوم إلى الأصول, right? The رسوم also means the outward aspects of things. في ناس تعلق بالرسوم قوي يعني. يعني الهيئات. والله إذا تحط إلى هنا ولا هنا ولا تسبيلها في الصلاة. حاجات دي رسوم. It's not that important. أما الأصول, that's what's important, right? The foundation of it. The Salah Munajah. The Salah Tanah al-Bashayi wa al-Mulka. 
right? The Salah and Bayn al Abdi wa Rabbi. That's important things. Mishma Allah, you put your hand on the sujood, or you raise your hand, or you put your hand on the first one, or you put your hand on the second one. These are the differences. But you see, people, that's all they talk about, yeah. Call it Facebook, or you put your hand on the first one. Or hey, add for hagatel. Rusum. So move away from the rusum, right? To the rusum, right? The ma'ani or the ma'ban. From the hadoos to the tajlid. Right? Hadoos he translates here as. I don't understand that translation. That's really not a very good translation at all. So, hudud, here means hudud in nafs, right, which means the allotment of the ego. Il at tajhid, shayl al hudud di khalis. Right, in other words, what I mentioned earlier, you have himma for certain ibadat and for others, that's based upon hudud in nafs fiha. Right, wallahi ya rahib, yani, aruh al umrah. لأن برضو يعني نوع فصحى ونروح على هيلتون ويعني بشتري كم جلابية وسبحة وبتاع في حظ نفس إيه أظنه بيه that's why that man he said والله في نفس الشيء العجل ما بيه لأن هو ماشي مع حظ النفس مش ماشي مع الشريعة so التجريد means even in those things you know go by قانون العلم and not what you think is right, right? Because their ego gets involved in that. هذه الخواص وفيران خاصة الخاصة مما دون الحق إلى الحق ثم من شهود الفرار إلى الحق ثم الفرار من الفرار إلى الحق. So the first one مما دون الحق إلى الحق. So anything less or not, Allah سبحانه وتعالى. To Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, hatta al ibadat, because when we say do not hak, we're talking about everything. So hatta ibadat, right? Some people they said that their deen is there is no god but Islam. يعني أخذ الإسلام كمصطلح like that's the thing we worship. For that we look at Islam, right? We 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 notice the aqwal in Islam. How is Islam? We will eat the things that we don't eat. Islam is not like this. No Islam, no Mido, no Ahmed, no Zid. Not Islam, right? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says this. Understand from this verse or from this hadith this. أما نقول والله الإسلام يقول كذا أي رأي الإسلام في الموضوع ده؟ What does that mean؟ كلام روش ما صعب كلام روش بكلمه طريقة دي ولا التابعين ولا تابع التابعين ولا العلماء ما فيش ولا أي بارة في أي كتب الفقه التراثية ولا الحديث ولا التفسير الإسلام يقول كذا وكذا. So don't make حتى the Islam right. As a barrier between you and Allah. What the Nasser of the Sheikh and Allah can be good, but the Sheikh Islam you could have his benefit of being a Robin. Right? It's not what I mean. In other words, a deen, yani, we call it ibadat, we call it al atakadat, all these things, they're all a means. Kullah was sa'id. Was sa'id in a man in a Robin. So, when we make that the goal, we make that the objective, sometimes we lose sight of what the goal is. So, the film, we call it Madun al Haq, Il al Haq. All are better or less. Right? Everything else is a means towards that. And we follow those means, Tabah. But keep in mind that it's not the goal. Thumma min shuhud al firar, Il al Haq. Remember when we talked about the Tawbah in the beginning? And we said التوبة من التوبة. So here من شهود الفرار. والله أنا مف أنا فررت. أنا شايف نفسي فررت من هذا الشيء وأنا بفر. لا 
That's that's it's problematic because Shaykh left that. So Firr min shuhuda kil firar il al haq. ثم الفرار من الفرار إلى الحق. Even this one is problematic. قد خلاص أنا مش مش ما فيش أنا مش مش شايف أنا فر الحق بس أنا بفر الحق. لا فر من فرارك إلى الحق ما. Like someone who says والله أنا سالك أنا متواضع أنا كذا أنا صوفي حتى الناس كمان كروش أنا صوفي. لما ذا إدعاء right أو أنا سالك. All of those things, right? If you see yourself doing it, right? Shuhudak li hada shay, fi nuts, right? Because the idea is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will fatta, wa huwa ladi man alik, wa huwa ladi rahima, wa huwa ladi adara. So why do you have this witnessing of I'm doing? I'm al amal, I'm al faalat, I'm al kaza. ففر من هذه الأشياء كلها أم جاست الله أديه. so the paper like I said here flee from your ignorance by maintaining a daily routine of learning. يعني the idea here is نحن عايزين نعمل يعني اليوم نحتوي على الله يعني ورد يعني something that I do Regularly, right? Never a shepherd can be all jet a little bit now. No more can he, the number is better. Wait, can she be a guy? Lou, I should ish. It's a power that I got a few of that. Then he lost it, lost the straight forward, whatever. So it had a purpose behind it. For a rod, it's a way to make every moment of your day meaningful. And purposeful. It doesn't mean that a mask is simple to the wet. It's not what I'm talking about. But everything that you do is a type of wit. Even when you go to work in the morning, you say, Ja wit and amal. And if someone really sees their work as wit, are they gonna be kaslan? Are they gonna be, you know, uh, uh, not doing the best job they can do? And I'm gonna shop on an best you can't imagine that. If you're treating it like a wit, right? If it's truly a wit, it's better. Give it diha haqqa. So everything that you do then, make it a wit. So I'm saying here, maintain a daily routine, a wit of learning. You should be learning something new every day. Right? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the only thing I love is it here. If you didn't increase your knowledge in this day, what are you about? Right? Even kilmah. Uh, as long as something, there's a type of tajdeed, tajadud, something is being renewed, you're doing something new in that day. Don't just make your, your day go by and your week and your month, and it's all just a collection of the same habits you see, you keep repeating. That's the sword of the Torah in Quran. The door of Asr al Maghrib. People, there's people like that. Alhamdulillah, we saw them, Kwais. But if you want to go beyond that, then, you know, go beyond that. So make a daily routine of some type of learning. Whether you read something, you listen to something. Hagakadeh. Flee from your laziness by endeavoring to add a voluntary act of worship every six months that you resolve to retain for life. And I talked about this in the last one. Yeah, and you try to add it gradually. Right? Shaykh after shaykh. And then flee from a gloomy opinion of the world to a positive opinion of Allah and His plan. Leave us that to the Muslim. No, just kidding. Um, why is that? Why is that? So, uh, why do people see things as gloomy? Why? What is the reason for that? I think one reason is okay, now they, uh, they, they kind of separated Allah from all of that. Right? Miserable. 
But so Shayla broke it up. I gave her to say, look, can't be that way. Ma, he's still in charge. Ma, he said, be up there. Ma, be up there. Ma, be up there. So, let me have a positive opinion. Not so much of Zuruf, but of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husn al-dham billah. Doesn't the Hadith Qudsi say, Ana al-dham dham 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 if we have a good opinion, then you will find Allah there. Then that what actually is happening, the way you see the world, it's reflecting what's really you are, what's inside you, not the way the world is. Because well, you have you, the world, and Haga Binum called your perception. So your perception is, is a direct function of you. A gloomy person, everything is going to be gloomy, right? Mutanabi, what did he say? Man kana da maradin fajd al ma'al azba murwa. So anyone, anyone who's sick, even the pure water is going to taste bitter to them. Because they're sick. But they're going to find fault in everything. And they're going to see everything as gloomy. And everything as dark. But people who are full of light, people who are full of nur, then they'll find things, the light in everything. And they'll go through the same, they can have the same day as somebody else. But they see the positive things, right, in everything, and they see the beauty in everything, and they don't see the gloomy things. One of the things that talk about Sayyidina Isa, alayhi is uh, him and his hawariyin, uh, they were passing by, كَلْبْ مَيْتْ كِلَا بِالشَّرْ And they said, مَا أَقْزَرْ هَذِي الْجِيْفَ يَعْنِي How disgusting you, Daddy. Sayyidina Isa, he responded to them, ما أبرك أسناني you know, look at his teeth, how white they are, how clean his teeth are. So he sees the nur, he sees the light in everything. And as if he's blind to the negative effects. That doesn't mean wahim ghafir, mushfahim. But it means that I know there's always something right, that's light. Because the very existence has to be light. If there was no Allah, right, then it would really be dark. Yani Adam. We don't even know what that, that would look like because Allah SWT has never exposed us to it. So we just think that what we're seeing here is dark. But it's actually light. If you can see Allah SWT. So uh, let's move on to the last two and try to finish up. يا بعد الحين على الأهلي والزمالك و... <تصفيق> قال الله عز وجل والذين يبتون ما أتوا وقلوبهم وجلا الرياض تمرين النفس على قبول الصدق sounds like رياض actually تمرين تمرين right so it's to train oneself just like you physically train Right? The eyes are not bodybuilding of that and it's training. You don't just jump into it with chill, I mean the heaviest thing in the beginning, step by step. So the other tamreen ish and nafs is training yourself sit to accept the truth, because there's levels of acceptance. Right? We talked earlier. I accept, but only as much as I can understand. That's not the highest level. So to train oneself to do that. So he says, عَلَى ثَلَاثِ دَرَجَاتِ رِيَضَةُ الْعَمَّةِ تَهْذِيبُ الْأَخْلَاقِ بِالْعِلْمِ وَتَصْفِيرَةُ الْأَعْمَالِ بِالْإِخْلَاصِ وَتَوْفِيرُ الْحُقُوطِ فِي الْمُعَامَلِ يعني المعاملة الظاهرة. So here, تهذيب الأخلاق to have a good character and good uh, relationship, so far the people belay. Taraf al halal and haram, taraf al mustahab and makruh, or hekada. Belay, you have to learn it. Wa tasfiyatu al amal bil akhlaq bil ikhlas. So, al amal, even if you know al halal and haram, al mustahab and makruh, you also have to know how do I be sincere in it. Wa tlisa lillah. So I do it only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a tasfiyah. 
purification. وتوفير الحقوق في المعاملة يعني المعاملة يعني العلاقات الشخصية كلها حقوق حقوق من حقوق الآخرين عليك مش أنت حقك عليهم حقوق الآخرين their rights upon you translates into واجبات means you have obligations so uh, to accept the truth as it is means that you're going to be evaluated on your fulfillment of obligations, not on other people's fulfillment of their obligations towards you. For this is not necessary. ورياضة خاصة حسب التفرق وقطع الالتفات إلى المقام الذي جاوزه ويبقى العلم يجري مجاري سويارة الخاصة حسب التفرق مصطلح التفرق كان يجوز إن بيرز من شيء يسمى الجمع سو تفرق مينز you kind of have a loss of state of shuhud. Yeah, and you're not really witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything. Yeah, that's kind of like an example of the farouk. Amal jama, right? Jama means your heart is united with the shuhud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi kulli shi. Fammabi did sadraq. So, hasmat al-farruq means you want to avoid and remove this state where you become kind of divided, right, and split and unstable because you're not having shuhud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the riyad al-khasa, right, the second rule. وَقَصَ الْإِلْتِفَاءِ إِلَى الْمَقَامِ الَّذِي جَاوَزَ Right? Stop worrying about the, what's behind you. And keep moving to what's before you. And don't think you stop here. There's no wusul action. There's always something you can move on to further. So the wusul actually is the journey itself, not the place you're going to stop at. And wusul is the journey. Right? This is al wusul not that you're going to get somewhere and then you stop and you finish. So, قطع الانتفاع عن المقام الذي جاوز وإبقاء العلم يجري مجاري This means sometimes people uh, will feel like, oh, فتحت لي أبواب ويعني ومعاني وكذا Wouldn't it be great for people to know about that about me? عشان يعرفوا مقامي يعرفوا أنا يعني وصلت هنا لا سيب العلم يجري مجاريا ده مش شغلك اصلا ولا تلتفت الى هذا الشيء انت همك ربنا مش الناس ورياضه خاصة الخاصة تجريد الشهود والصعود الى الجمع ورفض المعارضات وقطع المعارضات طبعا الكلام يعني تقيل سو so, Tajreed al-shuhud means your shuhud only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Majhidsh nafsak fil amaliyya li kullaha. Qulillah taqad. All you see that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hala tajreed. So we move, strip it of anything else. Was surud ila al-jama'a. I just talked about the tafriqa. Al-jama'a is the opposite. Elevation to al-jama'a where everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ورفض المعارضات وقطع المعارضات وقطع المعارضات. so المعارضات objection تعترض على حاجة. everything that happens there is a type of تقبل من حاجة دي جاي من عند ربنا. right دون القبول. قبول means I don't know لو هي حاجة محرمة أو حاجة لم يكن فيها الله سبحانه وتعالى في رفض طبعا. بس تقبل من حيث هذا الشيء صدر من ربنا سبحانه وتعالى 
هذا اسمه تفضل فرفع الاعتراض من اعتراض على حاجة بتاعت ربنا وقطع المعاوضات وما بدورش على المعاوضة أنا عملت كذا وكذا يبقى عودني رايت على مستوى العامة يوجلي اتس لايك أنا خلاص صليت ودعوت يلا نكح أولادي في الامتحانات لا مستوى العامة مستوى الخاصة أنا دعوت وصليت ورحت عند الشيخ و... وسلمت على سيدنا الحسين يبقى افتح لي دي الفتوح العارفين بقى عايز اشوف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في المنام وحاجات كده وبتاع ده برضه طلب ايه؟ معاوضة So you do the thing because Allah SWT asked you to do it He commanded you to do it and you fulfill your obligation مش عشان احنا يعني في تعويض مفيش تعويض هو اصلا انت لا تمتلك الشيء انت تروح تبيعها. It's not yours to begin with. فيعوضك على ايه؟ هي مش بتاعتك اصلا. So there's no تعويض. So in the exercise maintain a routine of not taking a step except in the direction of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Like think about everything that you do in your life is it taking you towards Allah or away from Him? If it's taking you away, you have think about it. Some of them used to say that, you know, I didn't uh, uh, visit this particular person because I couldn't think of a good, a good intention. So I, I don't want to do something I don't have an intention for. Now I was pulling the khatwa to be a hagat or So try. Think about the things before you do them. Why are you doing them? B. Do not permit spiritual openings to lead to a breach of etiquette. Let's say, our life begins to change and we begin to maybe see things in dreams and we feel in the people who are in the world and we feel that we are in the world and we feel that we are in the world and we feel that we Don't let that lead you to a breach of etiquette. يعني breach of etiquette يعني سوء أدب. أو خلاص ما دام العملية فكت شوية أنا ممكن أريح. لا بالعكس. You should do more. لو كان أي واحد يستحق أن يقول ممكن أريح كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. وما ريحش خالص. إلى آخر لحظة صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصلي حتى لو قاعدا. بس بيصلي النوافل والتهبد. So ما بيريحش. So don't don't take it as an excuse to say, you know, I got to where I need to go, now I can stop. That attitude is suhada. Right? That means you're only doing it to get here. And then keep moving forward by not looking back to where you left. Right? Don't think at the wasaltu khalas la lissa tariq amalik. So the last section, Sabah, audition. Look at the Sabah, Hakita So audition, yeah, Sabah means to listen, listening for things. So I feel wise, or for the Quran, the Tilawa, or hatta fi al Qasida, or in a sheet, or in a bed. So Sama'a al Amma, and he says, Al Hatika al Intibah is to be alerted, right, to wake up. And it's three levels. Sama'a al Amma, Thalatha fi Ashia, three things. إجابة الزوجة للوعيد رغبة وإجابة دعوة الوعد جهدا وبلوغ مشاهدة المنة استبصارا. So answering the call. In other words, you hear something, تدعوك إلى شيء. It's inviting you, reminding you, waking you up to something. So you answer it. إجابة الزوجة للوعيد رغبة. Right? So the admonition. Or the rebuke of 
الوعيد يعني بالنار وبالعطاب في القرآن رغبة طيب out of you know will doing it because حركة في هذا الانتباه وإجابة دعوة الوعد جهدا right so جهدا means you have to work for it do something right you heard about جنة والأنهار وحول المقصيات في الخيام للذين أحسنوا الحسنى وزيادة so this should move you to work harder للتشمير to move وبلوغ مشاهدة المنة استبصارا right مشاهدة المنة means seeing that all of this fault all of these nice things all of this grace هي منة من الله إليك he gave it to you it's a gift Right? And you should be grateful. What ma istibsar, yani, you see it by way of your basira, right? Not by way of your basa, but you see it with your heart. I really didn't do anything. Wasama'u khasa, thalatha fi ashia. Shahud al maqsul fi kulli ramz, wa al wukuf ala al ghaya fi kulli hay. والخلاص من التلذذ بالتفرق. So شهود المقصود في كل رمز. In everything, you will find it's a way to take you towards توحيد. أبو العتاهية أنا في كل شيء آية تدل على من واحد. There's a sign in everything that points to هو الله سبحانه واحد. This is called شهود. So Everything is there to show you that. <coughs> right? Some people see the world, the universe, and they say, Oh, look, the human being has two eyes and a mouth and a nose, and so does the giraffe, and so does the monkey, and so does the fish. They must all come from the same animal. And they say, Shuddha Maksud. Shuddha Maksud in now, Shuddha Khidrat Rabbina Yani, Fi Shabah bin al Hagati. بس في نفس الوقت دي لدي ففي إتقان في الصنعة سبحان الله right so it takes you back down to one thing but that one thing is لا إله إلا الله not تنسب الحاجة دي إلى التطوير والأولوشن كلام الفارغ والوقوف على الضايا في كل حي Should be called the hiss. That's a mistake. Called the hiss. So, understanding and all of the things, a lot of us, our senses, our ability to recognize things, right? So that there's an objective to be to be reached by. It's not the magnet ishbaa shahwa. Gave us two eyes and smell and hearing and all these things. It's tools for us to use. Their gifts, their faculties, by which we could see, right, and obey him, and follow the commands and avoid the prohibitions. right? What is it there for you to use and realize that, and not go outside of that? What خلاص من التلاذذ بالتفرق. Right, التلاذذ بالتفرق. We said تفرق is being in that state of يعني غفلة مش متداي الشيء في الحاجة. Some people will find like in that type of state, it's less burdensome. Right? And there's a type of pleasure in that. So learn to, to move away from that type of pleasure, right? And move to a place where you find your farah, your pleasure, in your shuhud of Rabbi Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Not in this type of satanic shahwa, pleasure, by letting things go. سماع يقصر العلل عن الكشف ويصل الأبد بالأزل ويرد النهايات إلى الأول. So a type of audition of hearing of listening that washes out flaws from كشف from unveil. 
So Allah SWT can, can show you things, can unveil to you things, He can give you meanings, right? We call it ilm al you don't read it in a book, you don't hear it from a teacher, but it's something that you learn from directly from Allah SWT. But um, sometimes these things have ilad, have defects, right? In the way that you understand them, in the way that you interpret them, uh, and the way that what prompts them, in the way that you listen to them. So, khasa to khasa, what they work on is a type of sama' that even removes these type of ilad. And one of these ilad is to be connected with al-kashf and not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? In other words, it's pleasure seeking, like the one before it, but you're finding the pleasure in the kashf, right? In the opening. So don't seek the opening, seek the opener, namely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَصْرُ الْأَبَدْ بِالْأَزَلْ That links eternity to pre-eternity. الْأَبَدْ يَعْلِي مَا لَا لَهَيْتَ لَهُ وَالْأَزَلْ مَا لَا بِدَايَتَ لَهُ Right, so there's only one thing that has both of those. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His perspective, الْأَبَدْ مُقَصِرْ بِالْأَزَلْ وَالْأَزَلْ مُقَصِرْ بِالْأَبَدْ Right? Sawabat uh, al himam la tifrqu aswar al aqda, right? As Ibn al says. So, how much himma that you want to have, always keep in mind that it's not going to breach qadr rabbina. That's muqtasil al azal bin abad. Nothing's going to go out of his will, his intent, all of that. So, have to look, right, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't take it upon yourself to think that. All of this, I'm going to be able to change it all by myself. No, you go back to al qada wal hub namely hukm al-Rabbina subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَدُّ النِّهَايَاتِ إِلَى الْأَوْلِ مَنْ أَشْرَقَتْ بِدَايَتُهُ أَشْرَقَتْ نِهَايَتُهُ Right? So if your bidaya is mushriq, it's enlightened, right? Then remember, you have to start out that way. Look in the hayat, then over. You're not going to start off wrong and then get to the right, but start off right, the day of mushrika, and then have a mushir to sign that your nihaya also would be mushrik, munir, husn al khitam, inshaAllah. Wallahu ta'ala, a'ala wa a'ala, wa sallahu wa ta'ala, wa khitala, ima yukhibuhu, min ta'atihi, wa ta'at wa sallahu wa sallam, wa yukhibuhu, wa yukhibuhu, wa yukhibuhu, wa ويفتح لنا فتوى العارفين به وأن يقل لنا ذنوبنا ويكفر عنه سيئاتنا ويتخلى عن أضراب ويكفينا بحلالها القرامه والطاعات عن معصيته ومازل علينا حق حق رزق اتباع ونقاط رزق اجتنابا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد جميع صحبه وسلم سبحانه وكرة سيدي عمنا سيكون والسلام على المسلمين وعلى الله وعلى الله Oh, very sorry. So learn to listen to Allah's promise and threat by reflecting on the pertinent verses of the Quran. Learn to listen to Allah's message to you via His creation by engaging with them with mercy and empathy. Yani kitabullahi mazur, kitabullahi al masur. Learn to listen to the message within your soul by cleansing it of its impurities of doubt and complacence. يعني الخواطر فنفي الخواطر الرديئة والرذيلة والاستماع إلى الخواطر الرصيلة والطيبة الحمد لله رب العالمين says that the people generally will become less uh, religious, less pious <coughs> because of uh, 
less certainty, less yateen. And the reason they have less yateen is because they uh, don't have suluk. And the reason that they don't have suluk is qillat al-musallikin, or adam wujud al mawa that there's not enough people who are actually doing that. So I think, unfortunately for us, we, uh, we suffer from this. And we suffer from um, many people who kind of speak and dress and look in the way of all of that, but they're not. And uh, they, they wind up pushing people away, not just by writing their words, but by their their way, their hate and their hand. Because they're they're imposters. They're not really all of that. Uh, and unfortunately, uh yeah, that we have this type of thing and and the Khabar of Ibn Masrud and I believe it's Mafu, he said that there is a Zaman that was um, the Zaman of the Sahaba that was uh Kathirun Fukahabu, uh that there was a time there was many fuqaha and there were a few people who just qurra, yani mugharra qurra. And there will come a time that will be qaleel al fuqaha, kathir al qurra, kathir al sa'ideen, right? Many people will be asking, but there will be a few people to be answering. And this is kind of the time that we're living in now. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, uh, the Prophet says in the hadith of Bukhari, in Allah da yantazu al ilm al tiza'an, wa lakin, li qadri ulama. Uh, that ilm is not going to be lifted by Allah plucking it, but every time an alim dies, a true one, there's no one to plug that space. It, you lost something. Uh, it's not replaced, it's not replenished. So this will continue and continue and continue, right? So people take, their, as their leaders, ignorant people, and they, misgui- they are misguided. And they misguide others. So, uh, that's not very comforting, uh, but it is, yani wasful wata. It's not something unexpected. People need to know that this is all expected. And we also need to know that Allah SWT is well aware of our affair, and everyone is going to be judged according to you know, the, the circumstances that they find themselves in. So, you know, if you one has been blessed to, to find a group of people or, you know, a certain sheikh or alim or teacher that, you know, is helping in that way, they should count their blessings and say alhamdulillah, because how many of the people who don't have that? Um, and we should look at people who don't have that, with We shouldn't judge them, right? We shouldn't um, uh, feel any ill will towards them, because if we're in their situation, maybe we'd be worse. So we should uh, be easy with them. We should yani, make them love the deen. Tahbib, yani. this, uh, this way of, uh, uh, you know, of, of tarheeb and irab and you know, scaring people, it's not going to work. And we have to, um, you know, we have to, yani, to, 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 to develop within each person we come into contact with and each one of us is a type of representative of the deen, so that their mu'amla with us will make them think, well, at least I dealt with someone who didn't hurt me. Someone, I had a mu'amla, a transaction interaction with, and I came out better than when I started. (coughs) That should be the goal for each of our interactions, whoever we interact with. Don't leave them in a worse state. Right? Don't be set up for them to say, Shukran Muslimi, what do you say? Right? Don't be a fitna for the people. You know, be something that's uh, uh, you know, a uh, rahmah. So anyone who wants to be well, it's never we, has to be rahmah. There's no way you could be well, and you're a nifma. Right? Uh, you know, there's no way you could be well, and you're a nifma. You have to be a rahmah. So, you know, that's Allah Ta'ala Afiyah that we, we do our part. So. Sidi, uh, you were talking about the Ta'zim, uh, the Quran verses, and uh, <coughs> the Hadith, and uh, uh, even if I don't understand uh, the Hadith, and these days especially there is uh, a buzz about uh, 
uh, understanding uh, the hadith in different ways. If, if you heard of uh, Islam Bihi and uh, Dr. Saad, because especially these days, uh, it's, uh, it's making a huge buzz. So uh, I don't know how to like to balance between uh, what if I, I, I don't understand this hadith and uh, I actually think that th this hadith uh, is not uh, right. Or like uh, I'm not sure that the sanad is uh, like, there's uh, not something like lost uh, in the sanad or which is. Uh, so, um, the Hadith and the Awiyah, they, it was a process where all of this was already done. Yeah, yeah. Hadith and Hadith and Sihah, right, what we call them, Sihah and Thubut, Yani Thubut, Yani, Nisbet had a Hadith ila in Nabi Sallallahu So they had they have a system for classifying this, how we go about doing it. The other way of understanding hadith is Hayat al Dalala, what it means. Baru there's a system for that too. Go to that, show it all about. And that's the people that you mentioned their names, <coughs> one of the biggest bid'ah that they're doing <coughs> is making people think that every individual has to figure this out by himself. That would be like Ashraf Tabib in the village. He would come to the television and say, I think that every one of them has a problem in the head or in the head. He has to do it himself. He has to write it himself. He has to open the book and read it. That's exactly what they do. Just like that. There are all of them. There are all of them. All of this was already done. Right? أي واحد بيشكك في حديث البخاري أنا ما أتوقع يعني دينه مخلصر، right؟ إذا كان الإمام الشافعي يقول ليس على وجه الأرض كتاب أصح من القرآن إلا مثلاً وطأ الإمام مالك بعد وطأ الإمام مالك بعد هذا بكلام الشافعي ولا الفلاد اسمه؟ does it make sense؟ if if we to start to believe these people يعني one of the things that I think Ansar al-Shaytan do always follows. Yeah, because if you say right? So we're checking the nest with all of that, checking the nest with what, checking the nest with the madani alba. You better enter the check with D. By the kid, my fish D. That's where it's going to go. I don't know what their intention is, but I know where where the conclusion is going to be. You have a match with D by the kid. So unfortunately, can I have the little salt up because I did a hack smack of Leia Dini. Right? In other words, ممكن يعرف في القرآن يفتح مصحف بس في أمية دينية. He doesn't know how it all comes together, how it all works. الحاجات الثوابت الحاجات التغيرات, right? هذا كلام الله المنزل لا يأتي باطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه. يعني المعنى ده يكون يعني رصين في قلبه. They don't have that, right? The تشكيك ده that's what it's going to lead to. So I think it's very important. Yeah, we have like Hamlet Smah, Mahmud and Leah Dini. Yeah, that's, that's where it's at. There used to be a time, and that's maybe they didn't know as much. They didn't have Google, Wala Mawsu'at. They didn't have any of the things, the access we have to all these things. But that's going to go to the Yid. Right? The Western academics will tell you because. دي حاجة موروسة وطبعاً مش هقولش التفكير بتاعهم ولو كان الباب ده في طرق لهم كان هيسيبوا الدين. That's what they think. I don't think that. I think إن هما اتربوا على كده. Right? And their deen was متين. Right? دين أكدادنا كان متين. ما كانش عنده شك في ربنا. ليه؟ لأن اتصالوا بالواقع I would say 
can اوثق من اتصالنا احنا بالواقع. احنا دلوقتي we have all of this kind of level of abstraction يعني اللي بتشوش علينا. Some people all they know is the news on Facebook مش منفتح حاجه تانية خالص. وبعدين ده شيء موجه. كل الوسائل العالمية الحديثة موجهة. بدون استثناء. ده الفيديو كليب وحاطط لي عنوان وبتاع هو فكر عايز يصير عاطفة معينة فيه. It's not إخبار. He's actually trying to elicit a particular reaction. So, يعني all of this level of abstraction, people's uh, uh, lack of attention uh, <coughs> span, all this has contributed to, I think, a lessening of a thiqa. People don't just be, don't believe in deed, they don't believe in anything. Right? They don't believe in anything. They don't believe in Mustafa, they don't believe in the Fi Haga Bad Mod, they don't believe in Hawa Mukni Bahaga. Afish. All of this is the logical conclusion of uh, uh, yeah, I would say that the, the kind of uh, philosophical system that's been in place for the past 200 years or so. This is where it's going to lead to. The only system that is challenging it, that can pose a challenge, is Islam. And they know that. Omar Fikr, that Imam, Christianity, Khalas, Tahat. They don't have it anymore. They gave up. Ba'u Haga, Khalas. The only one that's left is us. And if we're the last stop, then all they have to do is get us to not know our deen anymore. Right? And so, uh, we have an incredible challenge in front of us. But I think, so there, there's only a long term solution for this? No, I won't say long term. Short term is, um, I think, you know, last year we tried to do this with the classes we did here, and I introduced kind of how to see the, the overall thing. Hadith came in, when Zayn was simple, when Quran, we are in the head, we live in the head, we have a good shift in the we did all that last year, and I think people are young people, they need to know these things. Uh, uh, so that they're, they're free from all of this. If you really look at their arguments, they really don't know anything. It might be very weak for, for people like you, but, but for the random people, it's, I understand that, but it's making a huge if we, spark. If we point out these things, then you're going to see it for what it is. And the ne next week, uh, the, his meeting was uh, Sa'ad al-Din Hilali. So it would be Amr al-Adib, Islam al-Hilali, Sa'ad al-Din Hilali, and it's over. It gets <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm really worried about this. So, uh, it gets a uh, Even it's making a lot of spasm in university. Among my doctors, they were speaking about a lot. Even they were saying, oh, we see that this color, they just put him in prison because he he spoke, they don't see any, um, any of, what, um, of our uh, eminent scholars, the one who spoke to them in, uh, uh, in the TV and the, the, the show that was done, they don't see it as a, uh, they don't see it as a talk. They, they didn't even, some of them didn't even understand what uh, Sheikh Osama or, or, yeah, it said. Like, they don't understand, but they didn't even understand the khutab in the first place. Yes. Yeah, that's that. It's like I said, the Tabibi comes on the show and he talks about it. Who's going to understand that unless it's a mutakhassis? Yeah, Imam Shafi said, Right? Because Imam al amma that's the risk that all of that take when they talk to people like this. Is that in that's in the Bitfar Mashat story, what they're talking about. Because even though it's it's a very clear argument to 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 yani, uh, refute these people. It's sophisticated. It's not yani, one two three four. It's uh, you have to know a little bit to do it. So it's it's uh, it's difficult. And I think also um, we don't blame the ulama here. People also look for an excuse. In Dawud Hagamaya, the eight, خلاص I think it's right. You already want. Ease and only in Hamra Halal, only Hagat, then I was asked them. But for a certain time, it had to be. Hadidha? I'm sure. And I think the best way to do it is to have a 
best is not to attend to, to these people, to listen to them. And if I listen, I should go to the ulama, to the real ulama, because it's not my speciality. That means we either write the ladina kuduna fi akira far and I'm a kuduna fi hadith. We may have said like shanta, but I'm not a kuduna fi hadith. The rest way, because if I sit with the right people, with the, with the unbelievers or the wrong uh, uh, believers or the misleading, I will be mistaken. Sorry. Sorry. And if I sit for a moment, I should sit back, right, whatever, and go to the real ulama and ask them. No, the, the problem is uh, uh, people, they, they lost uh, 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 I think, and I heard this from more than one person, um, but right now, things have to take their course. We don't give up, but we should keep in mind that uh, you know, uh, and the خير المقبل هو يمكن هناك يعني ظلام وسواد على ما يبدو ولكن هذه الحالة لا تدوم لا تدوم إن شاء الله لا أعلم في خير إن الله يدافع عن الذين آمنوا بس الشيخ شعور في حياته ما رضاش أن يدافع عن نفسه أصلا وسابه يكذب well I think that's the best way because if you engage with them that's what they want they want a reaction and تدول حاجة ترد عليهم كذا وما عزيم الإثارة لا بس خلاص لا Sometimes it's sukut, up or over. Sometimes. So. See, I, I, I have a question. No. Okay. Uh, there are different interpretations of the hadith. No, I'm talking about like the, some interpretations for the ulama who had an eligibility to uh, interpret the hadith. But sometimes, the, the or, 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 or generally, the sacred verse. Um, but what if. Uh, this interpretation is like uh, uh, it is very sad. Yani, so how should we uh, talk about someone who studied or who is studying? Uh, how should we deal with these interpretations? Because we can't leave it out. When people say, "Oh no, there's this thing in the interpretation why you're not saying it," and we find this in a lot of the of the kutub. And actually, um, uh, Sa'd al-Din is doing this way more than uh, Sa'd al-Hay. He's taking out, he's not, he's not bringing things up. Mm -hmm. He's actually getting uh, interpretations of, of the verse or the, uh, or the hadith. Come on. <coughs> but it is shudud, alim wahid al-al-kida. This is, how, how should I deal with this? How should I understand this? Al-Qalmi al-Tukhim wa khutu fi al-Qim. Well, uh, that's the problem. It's, it's, uh, it's sophisticated. You have to know uh, how they used to write. Hmm. I think the best way to say it can be okay. Tabri, for example. So I fit tafsir or tariq. How can be قال فلان وقال فلان وقيل 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 يعني جبنا كلام قيل قيل عند عند العلماء بيسموها صيغة إيه تمريض يعني تمريض يعني لما أقول قيل وما بقولش اسم الآن عشان قول ضعيف أصلا يعني هو مرة I was in Damascus and I went to the bookstore this هنا فدخلت ورجل خوارج كده عارف يعني هو and he's trying to talk to the بالعربي المقصر بتاعه فأنا كنت أقول إنه أمريكي so I went up I said if I can help you you know I'd be happy to try to help oh that's great you know I was just I was just trying to find some books about شيطان 
قلت له خير يعني واتس فهي سلا ام دوينغ ا بي اتش دي في هارفارد بيرك هارفارد بعدين خدني على جنب مش عايز حد يسمع انا ام دوينغ اباوت شيطان Okay. 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 Someone mentioned it. We'll be able to call it a quad. Mish be ma'ana na huwa bi'u'mi bil qul da. Wa la huwa bi tabanna. All he's doing huwa mawsu'i. He's bringing you call it hagat. Ashan inta tkun ala da raih. How can we tabi al-ulama mish al-awam? He's not writing for the, you know, he's writing for people like him. He's writing for people like him. The huwa hayat to sift through it. And he's like telling people inta ba'a. بمعاييرك انت بقى شوف الحاجة اللي قلتها وانت بقى يعني محص and they used to do the same thing في كتب الفقه برضو يجيب لك قيلة وقيلة 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 يجيب لك اقوال هو ممكن يرجع قول يقول لك هو ده القول المعتمد some of them did that some of them didn't do that because they were writing for a specific group so when some of these people who have a little bit of knowledge not a lot they go back يطلع لك اي قول شارس على اساس ده الدين لا ده مش دين right. ابن هارون الرشيد لما راح كلم الامام مالك وطلب منه ان يصنف الموطا او ما يشرب الموطا قال له ايه؟ قال له اجتنب اجتنب ثلاث حاجات رخص بن عباس وعزائم ابن عمر وشواذ بن مسعود يعني ايه؟ يعني انت عباس يروي بعض يعني حاجات رخص يعني في الدين اللي هي بتسهل ابن عمر كان معروف بالعزيمه بالشده بقول لك اشتنى ده وابتنى بالشواذ بتاع ابن مسعود حاجات اللي ما حدش اخذ بيها ممكن يرويها بس ما ثبتتش يعني كعمل يعني عليك ايه بالدين القويم كتاب الوطا بدا بتقريبا 40000 حديث حاجه زي كده بالنهايه وصل لكام؟ يعني حدود 500 حديث فكل سنه كان بيمحص right. bringing you الاصول الدين لان الاقوال كثيره جدا والروايات كثيره جدا so to sift through all of that uh, that requires the work of علماء and they did that already and they finished right so لا احنا بنقول اجمع العلماء على كذا وكذا او الجمهور واي المصطلحات دي واي في حاجه اسمها اجماع وجمهور ومشهور والراجح والمنبوح والظاهر والصحيح كل المصطلحات دي is there because الدين فيه ساعة right الدين فيه ساعة it's يعني you will find something فقالوا ايه ممكن اخد بقول مرجوح لاصحاب الضرورة يعني واحد لقى نفسه في مأزق مش عارف يخرج منها الا بايه هل يكفر ولا ياخد بقول المرجوح خلص خد بقول المرجوح مثلا يعني but That doesn't mean I make an exception for someone, I make it a general rule for everybody else. So unfortunately, or they know it, I think, we get it. So that's my opinion. And they use this, right? Unless you did something completely different. And we live in a time now where it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, heroic and the battle is the whole way and all the ulama refused but it's the one who is left right like the satir in the book of Ibn Taymiyyah they were killed and 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 But we live in a time now where that looks like, yeah, in Haga and Gazaba, Haga. You know, it's cool. It's cool to be a rebel and to take a stand and protest and all that type of thing. So, yeah, you mesh, to mesh with the nefsiyat in this. So, that's like I said, it's going to take time. But see, is it also possible that 
possible. For example, there are several interpretations of a hadith sahih. So, Bardu, the one that is practical, one, what they think is the most accurate interpretation. So, the one أنا أنا بتكلم عن نفسي عوام زي هنا ولا منهم. Um, we don't just take from the hadith. We take من أقوال العلماء على الحديث. طبعا we have some of the hadith that are more when you read them they're more akin to like عبادة. زي الرحيم بتاع أمام النووي زي رياض الصالحين. These books were specifically written للعوام. They were not written as you know, these type of books where the ulama would have to sift through them. Bukhari did not compile this hadith for awam, for average person. Wala Muslim, wala Muwatta, wala Sahih Tirmidhi. All of these books were geared towards the ulama. They're the tools of the ulama. وبالنسبة لعوام, أقوال العلماء هي الحكة. That's the proof. Now there used to be a time, خلاص, Imam Fulan al-Kizah, وهو موصلت بي, سلم. But, now we have this, uh, some of them call it the tyranny of the text. Right? The tyranny of the text, I think Khaled Bufant maybe said that. Tyranny of the text means, uh, Right? Like you're doing something and he wants to know the delete. In Tabakh with delete, it was found the delete as well. Right? Then the delete, yani, min awgu, ayy wakh hit delete. هل هو من المفهوم ولا من المنطوق ولا الاقتداء ولا القياس؟ If you don't even know what those words mean, you don't finish the words with the lead. Right? The lead is not just mentioning an ayah or hadith that looks like ممكن ده يبقى the lead بتاعه. صار إحنا عندنا حاجة اسمها المنطوق والمفهوم. المنطوق يعني الكلام الظاهر. المفهوم الكلام الذي يفهم منه اللي هو الأصل المسكوت عنه. It's not mentioned. Specifically, but you are talking about right? Wala tabla la ofen, wala tanhar guma. Bilisbal walide. Don't say of and don't revile them. Then the lead are e. And the dal bil walide haram. But say yeah, man, it's a dal. Sah, yeah, it's a dal. But say dal bil hey, hey. Wala tabla la of. Iba al aqwa minu. Iba haram kaman. The name is e. مفهوم مفهوم الآية كده حرمت عليكم أمهاتكم وبناتكم وأخواتكم وخالاتكم وبنات الأخ وبنات الأخت إلا الحرم بالظبط أكلهم ما يعني ما كنتش أقول يعني أفتحها كده وأكلها مش مكتوب إتس نوت منشن إن الآية إتس نوت إيه الحرام بقى بالظبط مفهوم حرمت عليكم الميتة والدم ولحم الخنزير يعني ما تجوزش الخنزير؟ ولا ما اكلوش؟ اصل نفس الكلمه هنا حرمت وهنا حرمت. ده تلاعب الدين. رايت؟ سو الله سبحانه وتعالى خير. As long as he thinks he has, he has it. As long as he thinks he has, he has that. That's all I got to say. Yes. Um, with everything that's been happening lately, with uh, people that making others doubt their deen, like the aforementioned, um, I don't know what we want to call them, to not reach your own and with um, a lot of people killing innocents in the name of Islam, what is our personal responsibility here, other than dua and talking? That's a lot, already. One of the things I think <clears throat> um, is, Yes, there's a lot of vulm, there's a lot of oppression, there's a lot of killing, but don't fall into the narrative where somehow you're responsible. You're not. What if this was an over? This guilt tripping that people do, we bleed for Syria, and we're unhappy for Halab and Damascus, 
But I, as an individual, I didn't fail Syria. I had nothing to do with it at all. What, could, what, do you, what do you mean I failed Syria? What did you want me to do exactly? So don't 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 buy into this type of narrative and, and guilt tripping and you know like it's all dark and black because we didn't do enough. The thing we didn't do enough is we didn't fix this, right? If you fix yourself and everyone fixes themselves, then things like that will not happen. But this idea that um, you know we have to do something about this, no, we do something about this by um, treating the root causes of these things. Right? And that's a long-term project. Come on, if it's within our power to do something over the short term and alleviate the suffering, we don't hesitate. But not out of guilt. But this is this is what Allah commanded us to, to do. So I follow His commands. And um, we have ihtimamat. Right? We have those things we are concerned with. And that's the whole ummah. And what I mean by ummah, not just in Muslimi, we're very Muslimi. Everybody on the face of the planet today, with Umar Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if they call us some Christian, Jew, pagan, Hindu, he's still with Umar Sayyidina Muhammad. So I have a concern for the whole Ummah. But in my era of influence, that what I can actually do, and that which I'm obligated to do, right? What, what, what good is it if we talk about Syria, with Iraq, with Palestine, with Asr al-Muqim al-Sha'ir, and How's that work? Because those are personal obligations. You have to do it. So why are you talking about things that are community obligations and you're neglecting this? This is what I mean also I said earlier about the prioritization. You don't want to make priorities right. The thing that is more appealing to people is talking big tones and big words about faraway places. But what about right here? What are you doing? in your house, in your, with your family, with your neighbors, with your community. These are the things, ultimately, that you're going to be personally responsible for. And what you're personally responsible for is more important than what's from Kifaya, what the community is responsible for. So. It was a pleasure to try to serve you these past uh, three nights. I hope, inshallah, we can uh, repeat it uh, in a better and uh, more beneficial way in the future.